Hello everyone and welcome back to another great episode here on Eat Sleep Brief Channel. Today I'm be covering I think I'm be covering something that's very important I think to every reefer out there. Um, and it's going to be pretty much on feeding your corals. What I do, it's going to be step by step, also showing you exactly what I feed uh, to pretty much get the best coloration, the best growth out of the coral. Because, um, you know, one thing is having uh, stable water parameters. Another thing is, you know, having you know, the, the good lighting, having the good flow. But you also have to realize a lot of these corals, yes, you know, they do get a lot of the energy the coloration the nutrients from light itself photosynthetic um, but they also eat as well so uh, it's very important that we're not only feeding but feeding the right foods to obviously achieve this because you know, let's be honest at the end of the day we're really all chasing the best health the best polyp extension and the best color so in today's video we're going to be like i said covering that it's going to be very detailed i'm going to be showing you exactly what i do uh, how i do it um, a few insight thoughts on why I do it, how I do it. You know, hopefully you guys can adapt these into your beautiful reef tank at home. And um, yeah, another thing as I want to talk about, obviously the past few videos we were talking about the green hair algae issue, right? So I don't want to spill the beans too much. I don't want to make this video about that. But I am going to tell you that green hair algae is, I would say, 98 <laughs> uh, 98% um, under control. So as you can see here in this shot, the pretty much infestation I had is gone. So before I go out and I tell you guys how I did it and I recommend it, I want to be sure that it's something that's uh, able to be done, um, you know, in your reef tank. I just I want to make sure it wasn't luck that I ran into. I'm pretty sure it wasn't luck because <laughs> once you get green hair algae, you physically have to do something for it to disappear. Um, so I want to make sure that you guys can hopefully... Uh, replicate what I did in your reef tank and ultimately achieve the same goals. But like I said, for you guys that have been sitting on the edge of your chair saying, I wonder if Eat Sleep Reef is going to figure this out because if he figures it out, it's going to help my reef tank as well. Um, and like I said, I have figured it out. We are going to be sharing that uh, here in the near future. But um, yeah, guys, uh, so let's pretty much jump right into this video. Like I said, we're going to be going pretty uh, in pretty deep detail. I uh, really hope you guys enjoy it, so sit back and enjoy. So this is kind of where I keep all my food for my fish and corals. So a very important element here is going to be reefroids. All Obviously, you guys already know reefroids is a great product. But another thing I think a lot of people miss out on is this polyp lab booster. What this pretty much does, it gets the corals into feeding mode to get them ready to accept reefroids, whether it's uh, frozen food, anything of that sort. So you want to be sure if you don't have this, you get this because they, they work great hand in hand, um, especially, you know, if you're feeding frozen as well, it really gets the coral uh, opened up. So you want to be sure you shake this, uh, shake it really good. You don't need to refrigerate it, although refrigeration will help, uh, but you surely do want to shake it. In my reef tank, I use, there's a little measuring skill. I don't know if you guys are able to pick it up. Um, here on, on the little glass vial here, but I end it, I typically do about half a mil. I typically don't do any more than one mil, and that's pretty much what's recommended. When you do doses in your system, you want to choose an area that has high flow, whether it's your returns um, or your pump here, like my MP10. So typically what I'll do, I'll pretty much just dump this stuff right over the MP10, and you can see here, it really gets spread out through the whole tank. Um, and typically you want to give this about 15 minutes uh, prior to you feeding. That allows it to get in the water column, to get the corals ready, excited, um, and pretty much ready to start uh, eating. One of the most rewarding things about using Polyp Booster, it's a product that you're able to see results almost instantly. You know, a lot of these uh, stuff we put in our tank, it takes weeks, sometimes months to see results. So it's really good on the Polyp Booster to be able to see the extension, typically on the meaty corals only. Uh, what I mean by that, zoas, uh, trumpet corals, uh, scolies, you know, on, on really meaty corals, you're able to see the uh, polyp extension almost instantly. Like I said, it's it's great to see. Um, you can see here on my a can, you can start seeing the tentacles, uh, the feeding tentacles come out. Um, also, another coral in my tank that you can start to see it as well here is our, uh, on these trumpets. Like I said, it's just really rewarding to be using a product and be able to start seeing the results, like I said, almost instantly. 
So here I'm going to be releasing what I call my secret sauce. A lot of people are always asking me exactly what I feed and how I feed it. So it's very important you start up with great ingredients. The first thing is Rod's food. This is original blend. I absolutely love this food. Um, a lot of people say it's too dirty, it's not good enough, but honestly guys, all the extra particles your fish don't eat, guess who eats that? The corals. Fish eggs is another very important part. Um, corals love this, fish go nuts for it. And lastly, polyp lap reefroids. So pretty much all these together, um, as you can probably see, not only does this feed the corals, but also takes care of the fish, kind of kills uh, two birds with one stone and um, allows you to you know, get everything under control. You guys may be asking yourself, how often do I do feedings like this? So this whole concoction you guys are seeing here, I do this twice a week. Uh, twice a week, the the uh, the fish and corals get this, and um, that's pretty much my regimen. There is uh, sometimes sometimes on the second uh, instance of the week, I'll do uh, reefroids um, only, and I'll just spot feed those with like a syringe, um, as you've probably seen me do before. But you can see me here adding. Uh, you can kind of get an idea here how much I add. Again, in my reef tank, there's about 12 fish, um, probably about pff, easily over 60 corals. Um, so you can see here. Uh, typically, I, I I think I dose a little bit more of the polyp lab reefroids than, than is uh, recommended. Typically, one little scoop of this is enough. Um, but I don't know. I've just had great results doing too. My nutrients aren't you know crazy out of control. So this is just something I do. A lot of people actually get impressed on how much I feed. A lot of people think it's a lot and they, you know, they sometimes say, how do you not have crazy uh, nutrient issues? Well, the way I do that is it's been an evolution. I slowly added fish, thus I slowly started feeding more. So I allowed the tank to get the bacteria to be able to break down all these nutrients that I'm throwing in the tank. So by no means am I recommending you start this if you feed very little because this probably won't be good, but slowly ease your way into it. The last thing I want to do is you to have a huge nutrient spike if your tank isn't ready for it. So just kind of keep that in mind. So anytime you are going to be feeding corals, guys, it's very important you feed your fish first. The reason for that, you guys probably already know why, because if you don't, they're going to immediately go into the coral and steal the food from it. So you can see me here uh, kind of feeding the fish, broadcast feeding it to them to make sure they get some food so they're not immediately picking it off the, uh, the corals. Another good thing to do anytime, you know, if you are feeding your fish only, try and do it over uh, over the corals. Obviously, why? Because the food that thus they don't eat is going to fall on top of the coral. So you, again, kill two birds with one stone. And it probably goes without saying, but be sure you just turn off your flow. Um, you don't want the food kind of going everywhere. So this allows you to more direct feed your coral. You can see uh, me here feeding my uh, Ganapora, my Blasto, my Zoas around it. And it's really cool to see them. Um, actually really interesting to use a flipper, you know, in situations like this because it's so great to see the coral and how they react, um, you know, when you are feeding them. So very briefly here, I want to talk about rinsing your frozen food. Okay, let's very quickly talk about that topic. I'm a firm believer that you shouldn't rinse uh, your frozen food. Uh, the reason for that is because a lot of people don't realize, but the reason companies break it up so finely, especially rods, is because they expect the corals to eat from the small particles. So if you're there rinsing the food, yeah, you're making it cleaner, and but really your fish are the only ones eating. Your corals aren't benefiting it at all from it. So I'm a firm believer, you know, don't rinse your frozen food. These companies that obviously have formulated this food, um, i Pretty sure they didn't just wake up one day and said, let's just make this food. Um, they worked with reefers before they released the food, um, brought it onto the market. So there's been a lot of research done into it, and pretty much they know what they're doing. If the food needed to be rinsed, obviously they would sell it rinsed already, right? Wouldn't you think so? So again, I don't believe about rinsing. So if you're asking me, I would say 100% do not rinse it. Um, if your tank has a good nutrient export, you know, method, you shouldn't have any issues with that. Um, if you are having to rinse your food, you probably have bigger issues to worry about with your tank not being able to handle the whole bio load you have. So you actually have a bigger issue if you're really having to rinse your food. That's just my opinion. Um, so yeah, you guys see, I kind of run through everything. I feed the zoas, feed the meaty corals first. Um, the SPS, I really don't direct feed. I kind of let them grab it from the water column um, at the very end once the pumps come on. 
And um, one really rewarding coral, and I kind of saved this one for last to feed, is this scoli. If you guys don't have a scoli, you probably <clears throat> aren't aware of, of really how they eat. But it's an interesting coral because when you feed it, the thing transforms into a completely different coral. So you almost don't recognize it. The whole mouth turns like inside out, and it's, it, it's pretty interesting to watch. So it was very cool to bring this footage here to you guys to show you um, how I feed the scoli, but more importantly, see it transform and how it really changes, like I said, to a completely different coral. So here you're able to see exactly what I mean on the scoli. The thing is completely different. It's all puffed up. It looks all deformed. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's just really cool to, to feed the scoli. It's really rewarding every time. I wish every coral in our tank did that because um, you physically can see it eating. So it's very important to obviously get your, your return pumps back on, <clears throat> get your power heads, you know, everything turned on. And kind of the last food you can see here, what I'll do, I'll broadcast feed uh, whatever's left. And again, this allows really the SPS to grab it. Um, I typically don't turn on the skimmer, um, typically for about 10 hours after this. Sometimes I'll wait two, three hours. Um, but again, the reason I do that, I want as much of the food to stay in the water column uh, so the corals can grab it. Um, but like I said, if you do want to turn on your skimmer right away, there's no problem with it, but I'm just telling you how I do it. So uh, we're going to be wrapping up this video here, guys. Hopefully you guys were able to see exactly how I feed uh, my coral really step by step. And not only that, but you get to see exactly what I feed them. Um, hopefully you're able to replicate this in your tank. Like I said, guys, please, please take it easy when you're doing this. I'd hate for you guys that pinch feed your, your reef tanks to do this concoction one day. Um, and after a month, you break out with crazy algae issues. Obviously, do everything in a reef tank. I'm sure you guys know, do everything with moderation. Uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, but yeah, you can surely replicate this. Just start off easy. If you're already feeding heavy, you shouldn't have a problem with it. And like I said, try to stick to about two, two times a week. You don't want too much. The corals really don't eat that much. Um, you know, when you feed your fish and when they poop, they're able to grab food from that as well. So we're going to wrap the video up here, guys. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down in the comment box below. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram, please go give me a follow. We just surpassed 15,000 followers on there. Thank each and every one of you that made that possible. If you aren't subscribed to this channel, you want to make sure you subscribe, guys. Starting the new year, I'm going to start doing something a little bit different. <clears throat> Pretty much have various giveaways in a month. Not just one giveaway, but various giveaways. Um... And just to give you guys a, a hint, it's going to be with you commenting on the videos. So I'm going to urge you to hit the notification bell, leave a comment, because it's going to pay off in the future. You're going to be thankful I told you that. And uh, yeah, guys, so as always, thanks for watching. Happy reefing.